Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be putting together a shade loving container. Um, I noticed the other day when I was working on the baskets that our deck was looking a little bit sparse. And you know, we have a couple of Japanese maples. Um, we have an olive tree, a camellia, a couple of other random plants on here. So um, I just thought it'd be really fun to do a shade loving uh, container. Um, this area gets a little bit of sun in the morning, but and then in the afternoon, there's really not a lot of, uh, it's kind of like dappled sun here and there. So I think the plants that I've selected today will do really well. Um, but I did want to say that, um, you know, there's so many container videos going up right now. A lot of YouTubers and garden channels are doing their containers, um, which is so wonderful. But that just means that some of our videos are going to overlap and that's okay. Um, that just means there's just going to be more creativity for you to draw from and um, make your own containers. Uh, you know, I just bought these two uh, limelight hydrangeas the other day um, at Cornell Farms and they're a tree form. So I'm super excited to get those planted up in a container. Um, I'm just trying to find the perfect annual. I can't decide um, on what I'm going to be doing. So anyways, but we'll get that video up as soon as we can. Um, but let me show you the plants that we have today and then I'll show you the container and we'll get them planted up. Okay guys, so I wanted to show you the planter that we're going to be using today. Um, it is actually a pretty tall planter. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, but what I like to do with these planters, instead of filling it all the way up with soil, is I will uh, just put a container within a container. I like to kind of change out, you know, uh, plants that I have in here often. So for me, it's easier to just kind of plant in a container and then just transfer that container out. Um, the one I'm going to be using today is this one. This is actually an air pot. And what I love about these is that you can kind of shape them and get to, the, to uh, get them to any size that you like. Um, and the reason why I'm using the air pot is just because this kind of has a lip that kind of goes up and inward like that. So it's really hard to find a container that fits in perfectly. Um, sometimes it's, it's just a little bit high or it's a little bit too low. This one does stick up a little bit but I'm going to show you how to remedy that and kind of make that look pretty without it looking too obvious that it's sticking up. Um, but anyways another cool thing about these containers is I've been using them for years and um, they just do a really good job at uh, creating better uh, or allowing your or trees or whatever plants you have in here to have stronger roots. If you want to learn more about these, just let me know. I can make a quick little video or just comment down below and I'll answer any questions that you have about them. Um, but anyway, so let's get some soil in here and let's get this guy planted all up. Here we go. So because this container is so tall, um, I have some bark on the bottom and I also have a, a, an upside down milk crate and a couple of bricks to keep it elevated like this. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is just add in my potting mix. So I'm not going to fill that up all the way. Leave a little bit of space at the top and we can always backfill. So let's see. I'm going to do that. That looks great. And then I'm going to be using some of my magic powder right here. Get my scoop. Talked about this a lot. And it really is magic. I'm gonna put that in there. Just a tad bit more. And I never worry about using too much of this because it is organic, and it takes a while for it to break down. Um, so you're never you're not gonna burn the roots of your plants. Okay, I think I actually, uh, I think I like this one better for this project just put this guy right up here. This is my wisteria, by the way, if you're wondering. Um, I planted it last year and it's just been growing like crazy. Um, but anyways, so usually I like to put like a, our tallest plant in the center, but because this is gonna be kind of up against the deck, kind of against the railing, I'm not gonna put it in the center. I'm gonna put it a little bit towards the back like this. And then I also have a Hakanakloa uh, Japanese forest grass and this is really pretty and then I have a ghost fern I'm just gonna put this in the front or maybe on the other side just like that I do have a little baby hookra um, this is a forever purple hookra and this poor thing I got it so long ago and I've just been I've left it in a container for the longest time um, so I'm gonna get her planted up um, let's see. And then I got this, uh, 
a dead nettle cliffhanger. Look at that. Look at the foliage on that. Isn't that gorgeous? This one's from Little Prince and they have awesome plants. So I think I'm gonna put, well, that may be a little bit too close in color. So maybe I'll put that there and I'll put this little guy here. And this one should spill over. So um, don't wanna add any flowers. No, I think I'm gonna just keep this like a no flower zone. The hosta does flower, um, but that's okay. We'll keep everything else just kind of foliage. Um, okay, I like the way that looks. So let's get them planted up. So this is a hosta first frost and it gets to, it gets about 18 inches tall. And it, it requires part sun to shade. Look at the beautiful variegation on that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, I love, love, love that one. Okay, so we'll put this fella towards the back. Look at that. Ooh, I'm just gonna break that up a little bit. And again, the cool thing about planting perennials is that you get two uses out of them. You can either leave them in the container or you can plant them out into your landscape later on. So that's always a plus. Okay, let's do our Hakanakloa grass. Look at that, isn't that pretty? It's kind of like a chartreuse color. And this thing grew so fast. I actually picked this up at Bauman's um, farm here in Oregon and it was like tiny a few weeks ago and look at it now. These things go, grow really quick. Um, and let's see, this one takes part sun to shade and six to 10 inches tall. So that's this one. Okay. This one's not too, too rude. Bad. Okay, perfect. And then we will do our fern. So again, this is a ghost fern, really pretty. Um, this one can take, let's see. Um, so it's part sun to full shade. It is deer resistant and it grows one to two or one to three feet tall. So that actually gets pretty big. I love, love, love ferns. Um, you know, my grandma, like I feel like I get my gardening green thumb from my grandma and she, you know, raised me or helped raise me. And um, she just inspires me so much. And she's had, she's had ferns in her house for as long as I can remember. Um, and they're just so beautiful. So every time I see a fern, I immediately think of her. And um, she actually lives in Brazil. That's where I'm originally from. So anyways, I love ferns. And uh, I'm sure you'll see lots and lots of projects where I have ferns. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of soil in here. Okay, that looks good. Put that there. And then lastly, I have the Forever Purple Coral Bells Hookera, and this one, um, let's see, this one gets 12 to 22 inches tall, and it'll take part shade to shade. But that's just a really beautiful, um, just dark purple, really dark veins um, on the foliage. That's really pretty. This is actually the first one, I think, in this color, this specific color that I have. But very, very beautiful. And who doesn't love a hookera? They're just so versatile. Okay, I'm gonna put this little guy right there. And then finally, the dead nettle. Beautiful foliage. It kind of has that like little grayish with the green um, tips outlining the, the leaves, really pretty. And this one can take um, sun to part shade or shade to full shade. Let's see, yeah, part shade to full shade. And it grows eight to uh, eight inches tall and 
18 inches wide. So this one is actually supposed, I'm hoping that this will kind of spill over. Um, that's why I picked this one up. And actually, originally I saw these in a hanging basket. Um, and I thought these would be really cool in a container. Just like that. Actually, let me get a little bit more soil in here. All right, how are we feeling about this? Looks good. Looks good from my side. Okay, so one of the things that I love to use in containers is moss. I am like the moss queen. I love, love a preserved moss. So I use this all of the time. Um, I just, I, I have like a, a shelf with different moss, mosses. So it comes in a sheet like this and it is kind of messy. So um, just wanted to let you know. So basically what I'm gonna do is take chunks out of it and I'm just going to put it kind of like at the lip of the container. Just like that. You see? I'm not going to put it, um, I don't want to cover the soil and I don't want to get it on, um, on our plants because I don't want it to create like a, a humid or bad environment for them but I do want to just kind of decorate just put that there let's get one more package okay Oh darn, I need one more. Okay, I have some left over from Easter. So just take this little handful and just do that. Look at that. Isn't that so pretty? Oh, I love it. All right. So there it is. So um, I have plenty of space to water above, so I'm not worried about that. I'll actually get this all watered in. Um, but I think this looks so pretty and like classy and modern, um, but it'll go, with, it'll go with any garden in my opinion. Um, so I'm just excited to see how some of these grow on, especially this little nettle here um, and this little, this little, uh, um, Hukura, I'm so sorry. I've, I left her. I let her go for so long in that little container, but that's okay. We got her here, so we're good. Uh, but anyways, the fern looks really beautiful. Uh, I love what I just noticed. It kind of has like a purpley, um, purpley stems. And um, I don't know. I love fern. Like I said, they just remind me of my grandma. And um, she is very, very, very dear to my heart. And um, so anyway, so anytime I see a fern, I immediately think of her. But anyways, um, let me get this water done and then uh, we'll talk a little bit about care for these. All right guys, well that's it for today's video. Um, I hope you found this container helpful and it gave you some ideas to do the same in your own garden if you have a shady area. Um, these are definitely some plants that I will be planting out into our, our landscape. Um, I do have an area of our garden that gets a lot of shade, so I'm definitely gonna be trying these out um, in that spot of the garden. Um, but anyways, they are perennials, or most of them are perennials, so I'll just water them in every few days. Um, I'm not going to do any special care for them. I, I, I use Biotone, so I think that'll be fine for the next few months. Um, but anyways, I hope you found this inspiring. I hope it gave you some ideas. Thank you so much for watching today's video, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.